Welcome everyone to the video that will have your bike feeling smoother than a well-oiled badger. Whoa! Don't let the title of the video fill you with confidence though, because professional riders quite often don't know how to set up their suspension properly. And to be honest, perfect suspension setup does not exist. Luckily, there's a foolproof process to at least make your suspension feel better, which I'll take you through today. And no, it's not copying Greg Menard's settings. Trust me, I tried it. Didn't work. Terrible. Awful. Step one, service. If your suspension is reasonably new or freshly serviced, you can skip to step two. If not, get that shit serviced. You can do it yourself or send it to a service center. There is no point doing anything else until you got those bouncers up to spec. On a similar theme, frame bearings. Make sure they're spinning freely and replace them if not. Shout out to Santa Cruz, bearings for life. <laughs> Step two, correct installation. Make sure that suspension is installed correctly and in a way that suits your riding style. This means cutting your steer tube to the right length so your bars are at the correct height for you. And installing the shock in the correct position for your riding style if your frame has different mounting options. I won't go into detail here as that's not the point of this vid, so you should dive into episode two of series one for more detail. Step three, spring rate. The most accurate method of doing this is to measure and adjust static sag, which is super easy if you are running air suspension. Wind all the adjusters fully out, off, anti-clockwise, least amount of damping, then mount the bike fully kitted up. Settle into your default riding position, ball stance. Hashtag be a boss, hashtag merch available in all good stores. Attack position! Cycle the suspension a few times with at least one brake not engaged and then have your friend mark the stanchions with a flathead screwdriver. Push the travel indicator down to the wiper seal or slide the shock bump stop up to the shock body and then very carefully get off the bike without compressing the end of the bike that you're measuring. Measure the distance between the travel indicator and the wiper seal to find your static sag. You don't have to be super accurate, it's just a starting point. Divide the measured sag amount by the unit's full travel, then multiply 100 to get your sag percentage. Write it down. If I've not failed as a human, we should have a public how to bike suspension spreadsheet you can use. There'll be a link somewhere in the description. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn thinks I'm going to fail as a human. <laughs> Once you've measured your sag, you then need to adjust it to get it where you want it. You should start with the manufacturer recommendations, if you can find them anywhere, or if they don't exist, use the general recommendation of 30% in the rear and about 20% in the front just to begin with. For air, you just add pressure to decrease the sag or remove air pressure to increase the sag. Don't forget to cycle the suspension through its travel a few times before measuring again if you have suspension with auto adjusting negative air chambers. If you don't have air suspension, it's a bit harder to get things perfect. Again, refer to the online charts and frame specific guides so that hopefully you only have to buy one spring for each end. You can add preload to reduce sag if the spring is a little too light. Do not do this. It will reduce the sag, but increase the force required to get the shock moving, making it feel like absolute crap. With the bike unweighted, you should take the slack out of the spring with the preload collar, then add between one or two full turns to the spring. Preload is the devil and should be avoided at all costs. Sag adjustments should be made with different springs. Go higher to reduce the sag and lower to increase the sag. Step four, adjusters. Getting close to riding now. If you don't have adjusters on your suspension, I mean, congratulations, job done. Go ride your bike and do the testing in step five. For those of you with adjusters, start at the recommended settings for the spring rate you have chosen, or you can start at the settings you already run. If you don't have either of those, play with the adjusters to find out what the range of adjustment is on your suspension unit and set everything in the middle of the ranges. Right your settings down. You should count the clicks 
from fully closed or fully clockwise or all the damping on. Step five, the testing, the bit we're here for. Choose a short section of track with varied terrain you feel can comfortably ride consistently and repeatedly to get these settings dialed in. Having one feature that you would categorize as a heavy hit is key to test a full travel event. First of all, do a couple laps to get up to speed. Things may be a bit different than what you're used to, so go easy first lap to get a feel for things. Well, that's different. Ooh. After completing a lap that you're happy with, make a note of how things felt against the settings you have written down. The first thing we want to dial in is the spring rating. Did you notice any harsh bottom outs of the suspension during your first testing lap? If not, have a look at the travel indicators. Are they all the way up at the ends of the shafts? Ideally, you want to be close to using full travel if there is a decent heavy compression on your track of choice. Pretty much full travel. If you are close to full travel, then sweet, stick with that. If you're not close to full travel, then try dropping the spring rate by reducing air pressure or installing a lighter spring. Write down the change. If you are getting full travel quite easily after setting your sag correctly, you can try increasing the spring rate, but you can also try adding volume spacers to the positive air chamber to increase the progressivity of the suspension. Or if you have some Olins, you can add pressure to the ramp chamber in the forks. This can give you the correct sag and also stops you from bottoming out too often. More aggressive riders in general can benefit from this, but it depends on the suspension and the frame. This isn't to say you shouldn't try reducing the sag percentage. I can't tell you what is correct. It's up to you to experiment, make notes, and in general, faster, more aggressive riders riding rougher tracks would run less sag than a casual, cruisy rider wanting a smooth ride on mellower tracks. Whatever you do, write it down. Spring rate on point? Now pick one adjustment on one end of the bike to experiment with. Only change one thing at a time. It's tempting to make educated guesses and spin a load of adjusters, but then you won't know what change made things better or worse. A good order to start with is high speed rebound, then low speed rebound, then low speed compression, then high speed compression. If you've only got one setting for compression and rebound, then they are usually both low speed. Try to go in with no preconceptions of what you think it's gonna be like. No, 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 don't like. Open your mind and just focus on what you're feeling. To really feel a difference and get a good idea of what each adjuster does, it's good to do some big adjustments at the beginning. I'd recommend going all the way open for a run to see if things are better or worse. Make some notes. If it felt better, try closing a couple clicks to see if you went past your optimal setting. Write it down. Do a run. Did it feel better? Make a note. Add another couple clicks. Write it down. Do a run. Did it feel worse? Maybe back it off a couple clicks, write it down. Best yet, congrats. You've completed high speed rebound on one end of the bike. Work your way through the adjusters over a few rides and you'll find yourself understanding a whole lot more about how your suspension works and have a bike that rides way better. That was good. This process can feel a bit daunting, but in essence, it's super simple and easy to follow. You can do as much of it or as little as you want. Quite often when riding and changing things, you'll be like, mm, well, I didn't really feel much of a difference. So that's why it's good to make big changes. But also, if you're unsure, the only other ways to check are time it or set up a tripod, phone on a rock, something, film it. And you're looking for the one where the bike is the most stable, like the, the center of the bike, the front triangle, bars, pedals. You want it the most stable, the least amount of sawing about. So yeah, film both, compare both, whichever set and gave the most stable bike or fastest time, it's what you want. If your bike already feels pretty good, you can just pick one adjuster on a ride to play with and you might confirm everything was already bang on. The biggest thing I want to encourage in this series is that you lovely viewers actually get out there and learn something. Do it, make a plan. Go watch episode one if you haven't already to get inspiration. Get out there and learn something new. Then let us know how it goes. Tag at pinkbike on the socials, hashtag how to bike and some of your success and failure stories. And we'll try to create a little learning community that celebrates 
getting better. Good luck out there. See you soon. Yay! Well done. Woo! Glenn, get him.